Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the webinar on Navigating 21 CFR Part 11, Achieve Regulatory Compliance with Signature. We have Yogesh Lokhande, VP Products at Signet Digital. He is responsible for growing the signature and managing the product features and roadmap. With 22 years in the industry, Yogesh has moved, worked in sales, marketing, product implementation, testing, and consulting in multiple software product initiatives across insurance, education, non-profit, and e-commerce sectors. He is a mechanical engineer from VNIT Nagpur and MBA from IIM Bangalore. Along with Yogesh Lokhande, we have Shivangi Dube, AVP of Quality Engineering at Signet Digital. She is a seasoned leader with more than 15 years of experience in various facets of testing and quality engineering. With a profound understanding of the intricacies with, within the life science sector, Shivangi has also applied her skills across various industries, notably making impactful contributions in the life sciences domain. In today's fast facet and highly competitive business landscape, pharmaceutical, healthcare, and life science companies are seeking innovative ways to streamline their operations while ensuring seamless adherence to regulations such as FDA 21 CFR Part 11. Ensuring accuracy, traceability, integrity, availability, and accountability becomes pivotal in adhering to the regulations of 21 CFR Part 11. One common challenge involves manually navigating through compliance requirements while simultaneously managing daily business operations, leading to an elevated risk of non-compliance. This manual processes can be time-consuming, error-prone, and inefficient. However, by leveraging automation and adopting a 21 CFR Part 11 compliant digital signing solution, there is an opportunity to streamline operations and seamlessly achieve 21 CFR Part 11 compliance. During today's webinar, we will explore 21 CFR Part 11 compliance, its objectives, and the entities required to adhere to it, along with its associated challenges. Our esteemed speaker, Mr. Yogesh Lokhande, will provide insightful solutions to address these challenges. He will shed light on the transformative potential of automation and a 21 CFR Part 11 compliant digital signing solution in the regulatory landscape, showcasing how this technology is poised to revolutionize the operations of pharmaceutical, healthcare, and life sciences companies. Over to you, Yogesh, sir. <coughs> okay good afternoon everyone i hope you are able to hear me so devangi thank you for starting off the webinar uh, let me start by sharing the slides okay Just give me a moment. I'm just struggling with the sharing. It's a new platform we have used today. So I'm just trying to figure out the settings. Right. Oh, yeah, I can even switch on my camera. Are you able to see me also? Okay, great. This one? This one? Mm 
this one. All right. Okay, fine. Are you able to see the screen now correctly? No. Okay. Finally. <clears throat> Is everybody able to hear me? Can you just put in the chat? Yes, if you are able to hear me. I'm getting on the chat somewhere. Okay, fine. All right, let's get started. I will give you a brief introduction about our company, which is Signet uh, Digital. Recently, we are we have renamed our company from Signet Infotech to Signet Digital. It's part of our global rebranding initiative to keep in times with the times to to help companies because that's our. Uh, main work to help companies go digital from any kind of manual work, manual process. We try to automate that. So to represent that more better, we have uh, ensured that we rebrand ourselves into a Signet Digital name. Uh, we are a very established company. It's a global multinational. We're working in about 35 countries with over 1,200 employees and uh, having offices in more than 11 places across the world. So we focus on uh, delivering IT solutions and services uh, to our clients. And we also have a number of products uh, to help customers solve their business problems. We are also having the certifications uh, which are nowadays pretty common to most of the IT industry, uh, ISO and CMM and so on. So now let's, uh, let's get started with our uh, webinar, which is on understanding the 21 CFR regulation and its impact and on the pharma industry and what you need to do, how software can help you to achieve that compliance and also to talk about our solution called signature which can help you to some extent in um, achieving your regulatory compliance so let's move ahead uh, we've already done the introductions with me is my colleague shivangi uh, who is also going to help me in adding some value to this webinar Shivangi, hi, are you there? Yes, hi, Yogesh. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for this webinar. Okay, great. So we are going to have some conversations with you during this webinar. All right, now let's get started. So 21 CFR is a code of federal regulations, uh, which is applicable to a uh, number of industries, including pharma, healthcare, life sciences, clinical supply, medical device components, and all the uh, domains that you see on the right hand side it's applicable to them and what is the objective of 21 CFR it's uh, to ensure that the products uh, created by these companies are uh, as per not as per standards but are safe for consumption for uh, the general public because these are very sensitive products could be Medicines could be instruments that diagnose, could be instruments that give some measurements. And if anything goes wrong in them, uh, if they are not tested enough or if they are not trialed out enough, it will affect the health of the general public. So it's a very, very critical and crucial thing to, to take care. And therefore, a regulation is required because to ensure that companies adhere to certain basic hygiene standards, uh, to ensure that the output is uh, safe. So to ensure public health and safety is the most important objective of the 21 CFR regulations. And also it acts as a deterrent to companies to not engage in any malpractices, to ensure that nobody tampers with any data, and to ensure that the medicines are passed and approved and so on. So, Keeping that objective in mind, this regulation has been created. 
Now, as a part of the history, this regulation was created in 1999. And uh, since then, the it has not been updated a lot, although there have been many guidelines which have come in uh, the interim in the last 23, 24 years, uh, which, <laughs> which help in a little bit of better understanding of <laughs> the objectives. Now there is a part 11. There are many parts into 21 CFR. Now there is a part 11. Part 11 especially deals with electronic documents and electronic signatures. Now 21 CFR regulation can be very well accomplished even with paper documents. There is no compulsion that you must make your process electronic. There is no such thing written there that unless it is electronic, it is not acceptable. No, you can maintain all your documents in paper format, no problems. Only thing is that audit will take time and uh, everything, you know, being manual is still susceptible to things like errors in data entry and uh, delays in taking signatures, delays in searching for a document and so on. So it is very obvious as the rest of the business goes online and digital. Even pharma companies would like to ensure this compliance with the GXP documents yeah, is also electronic. So part 11 deals with uh, how to ensure your electronic documents and signatures are also regulatory compliant. Now let's take a look at what what does part 11 ask you to do so if we take a gist of uh, what they ask you to do it is basically nothing but these five things which are on the left which means your data should be accurate uh, whatever data you take from your trial and anything uh, it needs to be accurately documented should be signed in your documents then traceability traceability means you should be able to trace who has created that document, who has reviewed it, who has approved it. So that any point of time for a particular batch of, let's say, medicines, if something goes wrong, you want to trace it. Or you want to improve on some SOP, you know, you want to trace where the <clears throat> improvements need to be done, then you need to go and find out. So traceability is important. Traceability also means the ability to search for a particular document. Maybe some things were done last year or two years back. Are you able to get that information without much ado? Then third thing is integrity. Integrity means data is not changed after it has been approved or signed off. So there is no change in a backdated way. Uh, the data needs to be in, uh, having that integrity. Now, you know, in a paper document, you can just change the data and uh, take a new printout. So that that is a very serious thing to, for the integrity. So to ensure that integrity of the documents stay, there are certain rules, regulations, and certain practices that we need to follow. Then availability, which means the availability of the data is required whenever you need it, either for audits or for checking or for reviews. And then finally, accountability. So finally, it is the people who are working on these documents and we need to be able to give the accountability to the people to be able to find out that this is the person who actually created the data or reviewed it. Now, what it means, it means from a part 11 perspective that access to these documents should be only to authorized individuals. Not everybody should have access to everything. There has to be some control. So we are just translating these requirements into an IT system where access control is required. An audit trail is required, which is computer generated, not like manually I put what time it is. Uh, there should be no facility to change the timestamps. Then you need the signatures. Now, what is a signature? Signature is something that tightly binds the, the person who is doing the activity to the document, which means either I'm creating or reviewing or approving. So the signature is the thing that helps people to realize that who has 
reviewed it or who has approved it. Now, in case of a paper document, you can just put your initials and uh, there is still a possibility to claim that I never did this. So from an electronic document perspective, it will be uh, important to ensure that there is traceability, there is accountability of the people who have signed the documents. Then uh, more controls from the document are also uh, kind of required. And to authenticate the signers will apply signatures. Now, what are the real challenges for a company who wants to go from paper to digital? It may mean that you need to put in a uh, higher effort to begin with, to implement the software system. Or basically, these are the manual. The challenges in manual process is that you obviously spend a lot of time in doing this. Moving to a paperless approach means saving that effort and time, uh, preventing the errors that may come up from uh, human data entry or reviews and to ensure that the electronic trail itself is a foolproof mechanism to give you all the things that are required in the audit. Many companies also use a QMS uh, to manage their documents internally, but the, one of the challenges is that it's not exposed to third parties outside. And that means that there are some documents which need to be signed off by vendors, there are some documents that need to be signed out by third parties with whom you're dealing with. So then you don't have a seamless way to get those documents signed under the party level compliance. So there also you need some kind of a solution which can support that. Now, why do you need to do that? Obviously, the risk of non-compliance is a very big risk. If you are found out in an audit that there is some non-compliance, it may hurt the company's reputation and that's not really desired. Uh, as the speed of business increases, uh, uh, we would like to keep pace with what's happening. So you need an electronic way to uh, send out documents and get it signed. Similarly, sometimes customers also demand that. And obviously, who wants to keep doing things manually when it can be done electronically? So let me pause for a moment here and maybe ask Shivangi to say a few words about whether this 21 CFR uh, Part 11 or 21 CFR itself is a very serious regulation and do companies have to really take it so seriously? Shivangi, would you like to throw some light on it based on your experience in the industry? Sure, Yogesh. So, uh, Yogesh, as you rightly mentioned that Part 11, it is kind of, it sets the criteria which is considered by FDA uh, that ensures that the electronic documents and signatures are trustworthy, uh, reliable, and equivalent to their paper records, right? So this can be, this particular compliance can be maintained through electronic document signatures as well as the paper uh, equivalents as well across all the regulated industries. Now, as we are moving towards digitization, everything is online. FDA also recognizes the importance of moving from paper-based to paperless, which means it also encourages, understands that industry should move from uh, the paper-based things to electronic documents and signatures. And that is where there is a requirement to put a control so that it ensures the data integrity and security, right? So uh, if I talk about FDA, of course, FDA is very serious about such uh, regulated uh, regulatory compliances across all the uh, industries. Non-compliance, uh, of course, it may call for uh, any legal action. It can be somewhere like warning letters or it can be a product recall also. It can be uh, uh, somewhere uh, other legal uh, actions. Of course, uh, the reputation of the organization will be at stake with that. Monetary loss will be another thing uh, with this. So uh, with CFR Part 11, it is very important for the organizations who are under regulated uh, definition 
they sh they are supposed to follow it now the idea here is to move from either they they can go ahead with their paper based system or they can move from paper based to paperless system and that's how the topic of uh, discussion is today yeah quite true uh, shivangi thanks thanks for bringing in that perspective let's also take a uh, quick poll at this stage if our audience here also um, feels the same about this and we can check with them what are the challenges they are facing when it comes to this 21 cfr part 11 compliance so can we bring up the poll here uh, team poll is published in the poll section okay what are the key challenges faced by your department in getting this compliance so just bring up the poll let's have some results Are you able to get the poll questions? Are we getting the? It's already published in your chat section. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's already published in your chat section. Just click on that link, open up, and um, yeah, okay. You're able to see that. Okay, it's on the screen here. Can we see the results? What are the different challenges? Okay, number one, longer turnaround time. Number two, cost intensive process. Number three, challenges in traceability integrity. Number four, manual processes are too much prone to error and QMS is not externally exposed. Okay, has, has the audience, have you voted? Have you voted? Actually, these are radio buttons. People would be experiencing multiple challenges, not just one. So challenges faced in traceability integrity seems to be the highest and manual processes also seem to be a factor. Okay, great. Yeah, I think let's move on. So let's try to address those challenges with what solution we have. And maybe it's time right now to introduce <clears throat> a solution uh, called Signature, which is uh, built by Signet Infotech. Uh, to ensure your compliance with part 11 requirements and uh, what is this solution it's a secure uh, electronic documents and signing solution which is available on the cloud can be accessed over the browser and you can use this to ensure that all your documents are electronically maintained signed and uh, available for audits right Signature is a validated software, which means we have uh, done the validation of this software as per the regulatory guidelines through an external consultant. And he has checked each and every point, each and every feature, and ensured that whatever documents are signed through this platform are good enough for any kind of um, regulatory audits uh, visibility. Okay, so what does this software do? It helps you to sign these documents. What kind of documents? Your GXP documents. What are GXP documents? Your records, your test results, SOPs, quality documentation, IQ, OQPQ, all those things you can sign. Not only you can sign your internal documents, but also you can get documents signed from your third party uh, associates, third party vendors, third party subcontractors, whoever you insist they should also do a documentation as per the part 11 guidelines so even if they may not be regulated entities you if you are getting these documents signed from them using this system you will have enough evidence with you to ensure uh, traceability and accountability data integrity all those things that we talked about will be ensured through this process because uh, the system allows you to authenticate the signers while applying the signature. So you will know who has actually signed it. There is an authentication to factor, you can prove it. Uh, you can also integrate with your own Active Directory for authenticating your internal users. Uh, you can have a reason for signing, uh, creator, reviewer, approver, whatever words you want to use. Have an audit trail and also uh, 
depending on your internal IT policies, either use the system on the cloud or even host it internally for internal on your internal infrastructure. So all these facilities are available. How it works? This slide just gives you a very high level view. And after this, I will also show you a quick video walkthrough of how the solution works. So essentially as a user, to initiate a workflow, I need to upload a document. I can select one or many signers, select the role for each signer like reviewer approved. Select the signature type. And I'll talk about signature type. There are two types, electronic and digital. I'll talk about that in a while. Insert the placeholder, which means where to sign it and additional access code if required. System will automatically send out email notifications to all the uh, relevant signers, internal or external. As a signer, I will access the document with a authentication two-factor. And if I'm integrated with my Active Directory, even through that, um, click on the document, sign it, authenticate, and mention the signing reason why you are signing, because that's a very important part of the process, whether I am the reviewer or I am the approver. And then you submit it. The system maintains in the background all the audit trails and records, timestamps, etc. In Signature, it is also having a component of blockchain wherein we maintain this audit trail on a blockchain. So there is no possibility of anybody tampering with that audit trail also because then once it gets into a blockchain, you can't make any changes to it. Let's take a quick uh, look at the system at this moment and uh, see how it works. This will give you an idea about signature or how to create a document. All right. So here we are selecting the signers after uploading the document. We select a role for each signer. So you can see author, reviewer, approver. And these are the two signature types I was talking about. You can select electronic signature. Then at the right place, you create a placeholder for each person to sign. And this can be, sometimes you need to sign all pages and all. So that can also be done in a single click. You can give some additional access codes here. And this is to give additional uh, security to the document access in case you are sending some um, confidential document. Okay, sorry. Now that was the sending part. Now let's take a look at the signing flow. So, as a signer, what you will receive is the document. Uh, in an email link, when you click on it, it will open the document and to sign it, you just need to select your role there and then save it. I mean, this is just one of the ways to sign electronically. Either you select a font or you can draw your signature. And in the background, the document gets signed, timestamped, stored into blockchain and so on. And this is the audit trail that shows you different kind of timestamps. And uh, this is the signature appearance on the document. So now you cannot make any changes to this document, neither to the signature. So it's available on the system. Nobody can make any changes to it. OK. So when, when it really comes to uh, a system, uh, and part 11 compliance. There are these four major areas, and we'll talk about that. Electronic records, signatures, audit trail, and user and data security. Now, before I get into this, and I will go into it uh, shortly, let me ask uh, Shivangi. Shivangi, in your opinion, uh, uh, how, how can an IT system or a software system help in ensuring this regulatory compliance? 
Yes, Yogesh. So, based on my experience, where I have uh, worked with a couple of life sciences customers and have seen their journey of moving from paper based to paperless uh, uh, way of working. So, a couple of features that that are very important for a system which uh, any organization is using for part 11. The first one I would say is the user authentication, right? So authentication should be role and responsibility uh, based access. Uh, another thing is comprehensive and secure audit trails along with the uh, version control. Again, uh, the validation of the system is required where well-documented and executed validation processes are in place for that particular system. So that is, again, very important that uh, reduces the time of uh, onboarding any system in a, in a landscape. Another thing is, of course, secure and tamper-proof storage of uh, the documents, uh, your uh, electronic documents. And, uh, if I talk about from the end user perspective, now these were the uh, very, very system specific uh, requirement. Now, if I talk about the end user perspective, it should be very easy to use as well, right? Because uh, you are moving from one uh, way of working to the other way. So you need to bring that change in the organization as well. So that demands for training and documentation, so on and so forth. So if your system is easy to use, it will be very easy for the organization to adapt to the change as well, right? So ease of usage, according to me, is also very important. Now, last but not the least, I will talk about some numbers, right? Any tool or electronic system that is bringing you early ROI will be of top importance for the business as well. So these are a couple of uh, uh, features that I would want to see in any uh, system, which I would want to implement, if at all I'm, I'm going to implement that, uh, in my landscape. Yeah, you are very right, Shivanki. I think the point that you brought up about ROI is, I think, the most important thing. We all, if you look at any IT manager's budget, it is always uh, stretched between multiple demands, and there is always a limited money which you want to spend in right. so many, so many different things. There is a security is one of the very biggest. Uh, money consumers, I would say, in today's world. So when it comes to ROI, it's you have to be able to show how this uh, digital process can help you in the long run and help you save money, increase productivity, and so on. So that's a very important point. Thanks for bringing it up. But let me just go a little bit into the details for each of these important points, uh, because that's... Uh, Sometimes there is a confusion as to what is an electronic signature and what is a digital signature. I get asked this question so many times. So I would like to clarify that all signatures which are online are electronic signatures. So that's the umbrella term. Electronic signatures is the umbrella term. Now, what is electronic? What is digital? So it's only a conceptual difference. Digital signature is something that has a third party trust associated with it. For example, you purchase a, a DSC in a USB token from a certificate authority, which has this cryptographic method to put your signatures. That is what in general terms is known as a digital signature. Compare that to electronic. Electronic is nothing but you sign a document on a piece of paper, take a photograph of it. That becomes your electronic signature because it's in electronic format. So in part 11 compliance, which signature do you need? Do you need electronic signature or do you need digital signature? All over the world, it is okay to have, have an electronic signature. It is not required for you to have a third party assurance. So long as the platform which is giving you that signature is able to prove to you who is the person or the identity of the person who has signed the document. If that is available, then you don't really need any third party assurance. 
So in the case of signature, we are not only giving you the audit trail, the platform also gives you the method to authenticate the signers, maintain the timestamp audit trail and so on. So even the electronic signature and even connected to the Active Directory can add the further assurance of the identity of the person. When it comes to internal people, this is good enough because you know your own employees and users in the Active Directory, there's no problem. What if you're sending this document to third parties? In that case, how do you ensure that the person is uh, authenticated, is the same person? So there are two things. One is you ensure that the other person also uses a company email ID and also the system does a two-factor authentication for that person also. We ensure that the person completes his registration with verification before he is allowed to sign the documents. So that ensures that the third party outside the organization is also accountable and authenticated when he is signing the documents. The other minor things like, I mean, they're not minor, but important things like name of the person, email ID, timestamp, reason, etc., are all there in the signature. So this is covered. Now let's take a look at the audit trails also. Audit trails are also a very important part because that is where uh, all the investigation and audits actually happen. Uh, uh, let me take a good example because these documents sometimes are signed by individuals who are based in different countries. It is possible a uh, creator of the document may be in India, but a reviewer may be in Europe and a approver may be in the US. So the timestamps uh, need to be uh, accurate. It should not happen that the approval happens before the creator if the timestamps are not properly uh, mentioned on the document. So time zones and timestamps all have to be synchronized properly. In our application, we also take into account the uh, latitude, longitude also, as well as the OS, as well as the IP address of the system. These additional details are also captured while putting the signature. So it gives you additional evidence uh, for the signing. Uh, then it comes to user and data security. And this is the most important thing. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the regulation came into effect in the year 1999. And while they have some very archaic uh, regulations surrounding passwords and login attempts, etc., these things are actually governed by the industry standards. So the industry has evolved. Uh, security has become uh, much, much more secure, I would say. The ways to maintain passwords have undergone lot of changes. The ability to encrypt uh, documents, details has also increased uh, in its uh, levels. So if the solution is using the latest industry standards, then you can be assured of your uh, user and data security. However, if you are really evaluating a software, uh, do ensure that all these things are in your checklist. And I am going to cover a list of requirements that you must evaluate any software system if you are trying to uh, move from paper to digital. So we will come to that. But before that, let's take a look at another poll. Have you automated your compliance process yet? Automated means have you digitalized it? Are you still on manual process or paper? Or are you on digital? So let's bring up the poll, please. OK, there are some more points. If you are not yet uh, online, then are you planning to in the next few months? Please, please vote on the poll, please. OK, so it seems most people have already Okay, so about 30, 30% are 
planning to about 70% have already automated so that's a good thing okay great any other votes to come fine okay let's stay with that okay this slide also talks about uh, the point that shivangi had brought up about roi shivangi and as in our experience uh, we have noted that there is a significant improvement if you are doing some document signing using papers it may take 2 to 3 hours to sign a document let's say through just chasing and following up with people but if you are following a digital process a paperless process then signing can happen within minutes so there is definitely a significant improvement there and not to say things like higher speed of work improved co co coordination um, and eventually a uh, Uh, leading on to a positive rub off on the company's reputation. Uh, Shivangi, would you like to add some more uh, insights into this from your experience on how companies are using uh, paperless processes and what kind of results they are getting into it? Yeah. So, uh, with respect to results, of course, they have to. go with the with the control that has been put uh, and uh, it has to be digitized so the uh, choice of technology is uh, very important here so as you mentioned uh, the way you are getting the roi using signature so whatever any organization was doing manually in 2 to 3 hours uh, they are doing it in say 10 to 15 hours right so so this is a clear increase in efficiency of a, a, a good efficiency I, i can say and this will this will vary of course right and that can be put forward for any any kind of other value add activities so beyond roi also uh, I, just a quick overview on couple of journeys which i have seen uh, across different set of customers so roi of course it is very important once we, we once the customers uh, they look for uh, implementing any any system there but what are the different milestones that helps so probably uh, i see almost all our audience have automated but if anyone who has not automated just uh, experience sharing which tells you what are the different milestones in going towards this journey right the first one is uh, of course the clear understanding of the requirement when i say requirement there are many myths also uh, for uh, 21 cfr part 11 so you have to get a clear understanding of the requirement first before you go uh, from paper based to paperless uh, journey again the selection of appropriate technology so i also already mentioned that for me like a end user it will be ease of usage and uh, something that that calls for a very less training and uh, uh, documentation for me if i am at the business level i'll be talking about roi so i should not be i have certain budget where i'm supposed to exp, uh, spend it right so i i will be looking for uh, something that can bring me uh, early roi so selection of appropriate technology is the uh, is the important thing which where you have to consider various aspects again training of people uh, as i mentioned earlier also whenever you are moving from from paper based to paper paperless so any kind of disruptions calls for lots of resistance within the organization so so change management will be another important milestone in the journey okay and then comes the very important part which is data migration so for years you have been maintaining something manually so you will have huge uh, a dump of data right paper based data that you have to migrate to electronic form right that calls for for a huge amount of uh, effort also so so whichever uh, system is helping you and giving you uh, making your life easy across all these milestones uh will be of course uh, the the choice uh, here in 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 this journey yeah shivangi that's some really good number of points that you have brought up that may help our audience to have some food for thought 
thank you so much for that so let's move on to to take a look okay what's this okay this is just a uh, uh, some demonstration of how some companies have used the paperless process and built their entire regulatory compliance around that. So Bocard is one of our customers and uh, since the time of COVID where they decided to move from paper to digital, they did their evaluations and all, chose signature at that moment and have been using uh, the solution for their internal as well as external document signing, GXP compliance uh, on the same software. So this has been quite a good experience for them. Uh, they have been reaping the benefits of moving from paper to digital. They are using the solution on premise, which means on their own infrastructure. So that gives them more control, more uh, assurance that the data is secure it's all within their system similarly another company who's using uh, our solution but on the cloud also benefits in similar manner they also started around the time of covid where uh, digital uh, had become imperative and no longer the paper process was sustainable and they have also been able to reap the benefits of automation digitization over the past three years. Um, clients are quite happy using the solution. I don't want to talk. I mean, it's important to talk about what the clients say about it. Uh, but if you wish to really choose a software system, it's not just a software system, but you must also choose the partner or the company with whom you are working. So as one of the last uh, bits of um, information that I would like to share. And if you are evaluating a software for your GXP compliance or for ensuring this regulatory part 11 compliance, what are some of the important things that you must pay attention to? So for example, electronic records, how does the software give access to create and retrieve such documents? What kind of audit trail is maintained? Is it sufficient to ensure non-repudiation? So this is the key point. Audit trail may be there, but is it enough to point out who created the document, who signed it, who reviewed it, etc.? And that should not be tamperable. So that's important point. Similarly, from a security perspective, how does the system manage passwords? How many times they are changed? Is there a log? of uh, who changed the passwords and so on. Signatures, we have really talked about electronic and digital. So uh, we'll move on to data security in terms of using encryption methods. Uh, are your documents really accessible only to the people who have created them or signed them? Or can they be accessed by anybody else? So encryption becomes very important for that. Where is data being stored? For how long is it being stored? Can I define my own retention periods? Can I archive the data? Can it be available for audit whenever I want it? So many things are implied in this. And finally, about vendor qualification. So is the vendor in the market for uh, significant years? Is it an established business? It should not wind down so soon. Are they able to ensure the retention period of the data for seven years, 10 years, whatever you need? Um, you need to have a software that is validated. So are you getting the validation certificate and so on? So many things are there. Maybe you can add 10 things more from your own internal policy perspective. But this is just the guideline for you to get started. So. With that, I would like to uh, end this webinar. And uh, if you have any questions, please do put them in the chat. And we will try to answer them, either I or Shivangi. Let me stop sharing. Should I? OK.
Do we have any questions? Yes, Yogesh. We have uh, the first question is, is there any difference between 20 pin CFR part 11 and EU NX 11? Am I properly audible? Yeah, so let me repeat my question. Yeah, I am repeating my question. So the first question which has came up is, is there any difference between 21 CFR part 11 and EU NX 11? Are you able to hear me? Okay. Okay, see, 21 CFR part 11 is a regulation created by the FDA, which is a US based authority. They are concerned about the products which are coming into the United States from different companies who are manufacturing. So they are more worried about that. They have created the regulation. EUNX is probably 90 95% the same because their objective is also the same as to controlling the products which are coming into the EU. Compliance with 21 CFR Part 11 automatically does not ensure that you are complied with EU NX. However, because 95% of the requirements are the same, it gives good uh, enough confidence on the same thing. Finally, it's about the software system. So, the user security, the authentication, the signatures, the electronic documents, the way the software manages that, that needs to be evaluated. If your requirement is EU compliance, then you can ask the vendor to probably demonstrate that it is compliant to the EU NX also. So some amount of due diligence will need to be done. But I must say that both are almost 90-95% the same. The next question is that uh, is Signatures 21 CFR Part 11 solution a control system or open system? Okay, that's terminology is not really relevant in today's world. Uh, those terms were used in the regulation in the year 1999, where maybe those terms were important. Today, open, controlled and all do not make much sense. Today, what makes sense is whether the system is secure enough. So you must ask the question, is the solution secure enough to ensure my user security as well as my data security? If anyone else has any question, they can uh, write down in a question and answer section in your chat box. Yes, so the next question is, uh, can Signature manage admin rights? Yes, very much. There has to be an admin who can control many things, who gets the rights and permissions, who are the users. Admin can create the users, admin can give them some permissions. Admin can also view some of the workflows, make some changes into it. Say, for example, you created a workflow, the reviewer is absent or not available, then admin should be able to make a change and uh, give the signing rights to somebody else. So many things are possible. Admin can see the logs, can view the audit trails, can, can get many reports for analysis. Yogesh, as you mentioned, one person has asked, what security features are there in Signature? Yeah, there are many security features. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of, uh, as I mentioned, security is about documents and users. So for example, from a user perspective, there is authentication. There is uh, for third party users or people who are not in your organization, we ensure they first register and then sign the documents. Then from data perspective, uh, documents are encrypted end to end uh, uh, while 
they are in the transit or while they are stored at both times they are encrypted and uh, in terms of other access security there is uh, password control and which can be configurable as per your organization policy uh, by default we have uh, like 30 minutes timeout sometimes if you want to time out the system in 15 minutes you can make a change or if you want to increase it to two hours also you can do a change uh, there is number of invalid login attempts and uh, any kind of change in the settings uh, is getting locked so you can always figure it out there are many many more things there and we always ensure that we follow the best industry standards of today um, to ensure that the system is secure so for any further queries you can email us at www.signature.io or call us at 6358976018 Thank you, Yogesh and Shivangi, for an insightful webinar. Your expertise and engaging presentation have shed light on the power of automation in streamlining operations and simplifying adherence to the FDA 21 CFR Part 11 compliance. We greatly appreciate the valuable knowledge shed. Indeed, this was an interactive and engaging session. I must recognize we had such a wonderful audience. Thank you all the attendees for joining the webinar and making it a success. Looking forward to connecting with you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Shivangi. Thanks. Yeah, thank you, everyone. So Thanks Bye -bye. for joining us. Bye-bye. Take care.